Disney princesses are known for their ball gowns, furry friends, and songs. In fact, every Disney princess except Merida has her own signature musical number, which is why Disney fans are eagerly anticipating Frozen, which debuts not one, but two Disney princesses, and features songs by Avenue Q and Book of Mormon husband and wife duo Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. However, the Lopez's had a trial run with 2011's Winnie the Pooh and failed to generate any instant classics. Plus, they won't score Frozen. That'll be Christoph Beck, who has scored countless films, yet not one noteworthy for its music. But hey, he did win an Emmy for his work on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so if you remember the music on that show... The exact soundtrack for Frozen is still a tightly guarded secret, like the entire film, which opens in less than three months. But so far, two songs have been revealed. Idina Menzel, the Broadway sensation who voices the Snow Queen, sang Let It Go under gently falling snowflakes at the D23 Expo, while we learn that Olaf has his own musical number in the summer. Plus, Kristen Bell confirmed that she and Menzel will have a sisterly duet. But all these songs face some stiff competition. So without further ado, here's my list of the top 10 Disney princess songs. Will any of Frozen's songs be able to rank come November? At number 10 is A Whole New World. Now, now, sure, this is a great musical number, but it's at the bottom of this list because it's not really Jasmine's. In fact, this duet with Aladdin is Jasmine's only song in the entire film. That makes Jasmine the only Disney princess not to get her very own song, although she did have one originally. Howard Ashman, who worked intensely on Aladdin right before his death, had originally imagined Princess Jasmine as a spoiled brat and wrote her the song, Call Me a Princess. However, when her character was changed, the song was cut, but will resurface in the new Aladdin stage musical, this time sung by Jasmine to scare off potential suitors. As for A Whole New World, the lyrics for this song were actually written by Tim Rice, who took over once Ashman passed away, and who would go on to co-create one of Disney's most celebrated soundtracks with Ashman's former partner Alan Menken, The Lion King. A Whole New World was a hit outside of the film as well, with the pop version unseating Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You at the top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart in 1993, the only Disney song to ever top that famous list. Number 9 goes to Reflection, which interestingly was also sung by Leah Salonga, the singing voice for both Jasmine and Mulan. Now, the whole point of Mulan was that she was a warrior, not a singer, so not surprisingly, this song hasn't gotten much attention. It's much more noteworthy for jumpstarting the singing career of former Mouseketeer Christina Aguilera, who wowed the industry with her vocals on the pop single, and promptly landed a recording contract with RCA. One year later, Reflection was included on her debut album, which also featured her now classic singles, Genie in a Bottle and What a Girl Wants. By the way, the score for Mulan was composed by the legendary Jerry Goldsmith, who mentored Frozen's composer Christoph Beck. Talk about a small world. Coming in at number 8 is Almost There. Sadly, while Tiana is often prominently displayed on Disney Princess merchandise and in the theme parks, her film and its soundtrack are often overlooked. Too bad, because Almost There is one of the best messages in a Disney princess song, as Tiana explains to her mother how she's so close to achieving her lifelong goal of opening her own restaurant, a goal which she's achieving through hard work. Perhaps Almost There has never quite caught on because its jazz and gospel influences, perfectly captured by Pixar favorite Randy Newman, aren't that appealing to young girls. Because, you know, if there's anything girls like, it's going to jazz clubs and church. On the plus side, though, Almost There is sung by Tony Award-winning actress Anika Noni Rose. In fact, there had been tough competition for the gig, with Rose beating out fellow songstresses Jennifer Hudson and Alicia Keys, as well as Tyra Banks. I was going to make a joke about Tyra Banks singing, but hey, nobody works as hard as Tyra. Next at number 7 is When Will My Life Begin? As Disney debuted their first digital princess, they didn't want to take any chances and put their top Disney princess experts on the case, such as animator Glenn Keane and composer Alan Menken. Here Menken teamed up with lyricist Glenn Slater, who worked with Menken on the Broadway version of The Little Mermaid after Howard Ashman's death, as well as Disney's Home on the Range and Sister Act the Musical. Not a great resume and therefore not a great soundtrack. So why number 7? That's due to the sheer popularity of Rapunzel, and this is her signature song. 
Rapunzel's duet with Flynn Rider, I See the Light, might have been nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song, but the upbeat When Will My Life Begin seems to be more popular with actual Disney Princess fans. Admirably, the song highlights how Rapunzel makes the most of her time locked up in the tower, and is relatable to countless girls who better themselves during long and boring summers. Plus, Mandy Moore's light and fun pop vocals proved to be an excellent match for perhaps Disney's most contemporary princess. Number 6 is Belle, the opening number that sets the stage for what would become the first animated film to ever be nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. Belle was also nominated for Best Original Song, and is the longest song in the movie, and the longest song on this list. Little wonder is Belle is big on exposition and one of the rare operetta-style Disney songs as opposed to their usual ballads. It's an example of Howard Ashman's impressive range and boldness as not just a lyricist but a storyteller, and arguably the greatest creative presence at Disney since Walt. Belle not only introduces audiences to the first brainy Disney princess, but also its first devilishly handsome villain Gaston, and later one Hugh Jackman, as Beauty and the Beast became Disney's first live-action stage adaptation of their animated films. Now you'll notice as we get to number 5 that the earlier Disney princesses are helped substantially by the use of their songs in the Disney theme parks and so on. In fact, I'd bet that when a number of you heard A Dream Was A Wish Your Heart Makes for the first time, you weren't watching Cinderella. After the opening credit song, it's the first song of the film and has become representative of not just the Disney princess line, but Disney in general, along with songs like When You Wish Upon a Star. Indeed, Eileen Woods, who also voiced Cinderella, delivers an almost haunting rendition of not only this song, but So This Is Love as well. And the Cinderella soundtrack has an impressive pedigree, created by Mac David, who wrote the English lyrics for Edith Piaf's La Vie en Rose, and Al Hoffman, who wrote for the likes of Frank Sinatra, Perry Como, and Nat King Cole. Perry Como even did a cover of A Dream as a Wish Your Heart Makes, as did Bette Midler, Cher, Johnny Mathis, and Michael Bolton. Perhaps one of the reasons it sticks in your head is that it's based on Etude No. 9, Ricardanza, by classical 19th century composer Franz Liszt. Number 4 is the very first Disney princess song, Someday My Prince Will Come. This can also be heard throughout the Disney theme parks and is the mantra of the Disney princess line. After When You Wish Upon a Star, it's the next highest Disney song on AFI's Top 100 Songs in Cinema, coming in at number 19 on their list. Lyricist Larry Morey wrote the song with composer Frank Churchill, the latter who'd written the music for Disney's first big hit, The Three Little Pigs. In fact, it was the money that was made off of that short and its hit song, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf, that helped pay for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But while Adriana Casalotti enchanted millions with her singing, no one would ever hear her sing again, as Walt Disney put her under contract and refused to let her appear in any other films or media in an effort to ensure that Snow White remained unique. In fact, Disney didn't even credit any of his voice actors in the original film. But karma's a b**** and since Disney didn't have a music publishing company when he made Snow White, he had to go through Born Company Music Publishers, which have refused to sell the rights back to Disney to this day. Which really sucks, as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the very first movie to release a soundtrack for sale to the public. Number 3 is Once Upon a Dream, the last Disney princess song produced under Walt Disney's supervision, a genre that would not be revisited until Howard Ashman revived it with the Disney Renaissance 30 years later. Once Upon a Dream has a timeless quality to it as it's based on the music from the famous 1890 ballet by Tchaikovsky, and also happens to be the theme for the entire film, played not once, not twice, but three times. Mary Costa provided both the voice and singing voice for Princess Aurora, an excellent choice by Disney as she was also a professional opera singer. But the biggest reason that Once Upon a Dream is so high up on this list is that it's the only Disney princess song to literally land the prince, as it's Princess Aurora's sweet vocals which lure him into the woods. Yes, Prince Philip didn't fall in love at first sight, but listen. Number two has to go to one of the real powerhouse Disney princesses, and that's Pocahontas. In fact, it's hard to choose between Just Around the Riverbend and Colors of the Wind, but Colors ultimately wins out as it really was the big winner, taking home an Academy Award, Golden Globe, and Grammy. Alan Menken once again did right by a Disney princess, and this time was joined by lyricist Stephen Schwartz, 
who then blew all his goodwill a year later with the crappy soundtrack for The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Alan Menken was able to emerge unscathed. Still, Schwartz would go on to write the lyrics and music for one of Broadway's most successful and memorable musicals, Wicked. Interestingly, while recent Disney princesses Tiana and Rapunzel aren't known so much for their songs, it's the opposite with Pocahontas, perhaps because she sings the hell out of them. That's all thanks to Tony Award-winning stage actress Judy Kuhn, who provided the singing voice for Pocahontas. It also ended up being a huge hit for Vanessa Williams, who recorded it as a pop single for the film's soundtrack. Plus, to this day, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more thrilling song about the environment, a musical genre that has evolved little beyond hippies. I'm pretty sure you've guessed number one by now, and probably knew what it was when you clicked on this video. That's because Part of Your World is the perfect storm of a Disney princess song. From Howard Ashman's clever lyrics to Alan Menken's haunting score, to Glenn Keane's powerful animation to Jody Benson's heartbreaking performance. Part of Your World was the first Disney princess song to be written in the style of a Broadway ballad, moving the story forward instead of just highlighting something that had already been established. Sure, the I Want song has long been a staple for live-action musicals, but was entirely new for the world of Disney animation. And everyone dug in with gusto as Ariel is the first Disney princess to truly put on a show rather than just sing to herself or friends. Surprisingly, Part of Your World was not nominated for Best Original Song, while Under the Sea and Kiss the Girl were. However, any little girl or woman who's ever passionately belted out Part of Your World will tell you that the Academy made a mistake. So that's my list of the top 10 Disney princess songs. Be sure to share your own thoughts down below, as well as your hopes for the songs in Disney's Frozen. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.